Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem Ati Allahi Ya Rasul Wa Ulil Amri Minkum and always a reminder for myself and Abdul Aji said, Ta'eefu, Miskeenu, Zalim, Jahal. But for the grace of Allah that we're still in existence, alhamdulillah, in this month of on and off and month of binary code, inshaAllah, what do we have? I don't know, I thank all the people whom are joining us wherever they are all over the world, joining online inshaAllah three days a week so that people can feel connected inshaAllah, ask your questions, email help me at nurmuhammad.com inshaAllah. As Alaikum Sayyidi. Walaykum as Sayyidi, if our yeah. only service is based on internet sharing, how will we continue our service when the internet shuts down? InshaAllah, there'll be a new way to serve. There's always a, a way to serve Allah whether we give food, whether it's calamities and working through calamities. I'm sure that uh, many people will be in difficulties and suffering so our life will be a, a life of service in, in every time and in every event. There's a way to serve Allah and to not waste our time doing nothing, serving only ourselves. So this is the main concept of it. So right now to serve knowledge because people are in, in need of knowledge. And the greatest to support is the support of knowledge because it's the knowledge that sets people free, it's the knowledge that breaks the chains of shaitan, it's the knowledges that attack the shaitan, shayateen. So it is a spiritual warfare. What the shaitans are hoping for is to keep people in ignorance and this is their, their greatest battle against Islam because Islam illuminates with whatever it does. So Islamic haqqaiqs and realities then are tremendous luminary sources for this world and the world of darkness that sort of keeps trying to encroach upon people and that's why it's so significant. Feeding people, helping people, giving food, giving water and spreading knowledge. There can be nothing better than as Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan, there's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. These qualities, so alhamdulillah in internet goes down. There'll be a new way to give food, water and to spread the, the good word inshaAllah and, and give people hope to reach towards realities and Allah's safety and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad inshaAllah. As alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum as Abdullah. How can we present ourselves in the noble presence of Ulul Amr and Rasulullah when we have done so many sins that we are ashamed of? Yeah, the, the presenting of oneself in the spiritual practices is not the self that you have of your physicality. So when one is meditating and contemplating and connecting with their heart and with their soul, it's the cleaner reality of themselves. So they don't take the dirty physicality anywhere that stays behind on this earth and what's necessary is to take that which is pure and the light. So alhamdulillah when they make the connection into the world of light it's their light reality. 
and then our zikrs and istighfars then clean and purify the darajat and the rank of the light and the soul inshaAllah and give it to what its nature and its reality should be inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Wa Alaikum As Salaam Wa Rahmatullah In the book that was recommended, Tazkirat al Awliya, there are many stories of awliya barely eating, sleeping, or indulging any aspect of dunya. How can that be achieved? Yeah, I think we should shoot for a more humble reality. That these are the lives of awliya, and we're not awliya, so we should first start with a humble approach. Instead of getting something and saying, now I'm going to copy exactly like them and, and telling myself I'm a awliya or I'm a wali, it's more to understand the, the direction in which we're trying to move and the characteristics so that we identify the characteristics of goodness, of sacrifice, of good character and people trying to reach their reality. And then these are the great mujahid, the, those whom were great fighters against devils and themselves. So it's like loving the companion saying, tomorrow I'm going to be like a Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq. Yeah, you love Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq but there's no way for you to reach that. But you keep them as the characteristic in which you want to achieve and the reality that you wish to achieve. I see you Jose. Yeah. So it's important to keep to the reality and to achieve the reality and the path. So it's not about getting the book and immediately thinking that we're going to be walis tomorrow inshaAllah. But it gives also an excellent source of their character, their lives and the struggle so that when we talk about things it's not just my opinion saying something. But this was the way. So when you read their books you say, oh this sounds like shaykh's teachings. When you read their examples then you say, oh this sounds like the shaykh's teachings. So that we familiarize ourselves with the tariqah world that doesn't exist anymore, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Wa Rahmatullah Please tell us more about the seven categories of awliya Allah and their representation of seven continents and the seven awliya Allah representing the seven divinely attributes. Yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Sorry. InshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Whenever I close my eyes, I see crocodiles, sometimes one, sometimes more. How can I get rid of them? <laughs> yeah, cro <laughs> the crocodile is an is a interesting characteristic. So it's a hard-skinned creature with very sharp teeth and much sought after for shoes and purses. So we have to try to be careful about that reality is not to have the characteristic, characteristic of a crocodile and to be sharp and to be harsh and uh, difficult, difficult characteristics that we, we try to avoid. And if there are people with those characteristics around us then we try to again keep in the meditation, build the energy, build the, the connection to Prophet and uh, the whole reality of the oceans of nothingness. So there are snakes and rats and cockroaches and every type of creature around everyone. And these are usually the representation of the energy fields of people. So it's a, it's a part of the cleansing process that again goes back to the meditating, building the energy, building all of the spiritual practices and the reason for doing all of those practices. And alhamdulillah Allah sent us to the most powerful way to the heavens. 
ashhadu an la ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi is the ultimate binary code for creation. And the one whom understands binary code and imagine the engineers who understood it, they brought to us all of these technologies. Imagine the ones whom they spiritually begin to understand. If you can understand the spiritual significance of this binary code then you can reach to the Divinely oceans and eternal oceans, that which is significant because it represents the state of being off which is really never off because the off only allows you to reach to the oceans that are eternally on. So it has an immense secret for this was the way of awliya in which they understood that the, they have to reach to this ocean of Muhammadun Rasulullah whom will teach them a lifelong path of being off. Only in their off state can they experience La ilaha illallah and that becomes the immense oceans. And if they don't reach and they don't understand they can talk all they want about Allah but they're very far from anything to do with that reality. So if you come across 99% of people say, yes everything Allah, they think they understand about Allah, they, they say there's nothing but Allah. But if they didn't learn to turn off then what happens? Then they're very much on and by virtue of their on they have pushed themselves away from the Divine the Presence. So the nearness to Allah when He wants to bring the servant towards Marifah is to reach towards the king of Nukht whom is reality is to be a Nukht for all the Prophets, all the angels, all the saints. Anything and anyone that thinks it's anything must present itself to the presence of Muhammadun Rasulullah the one whom annihilates everything and everyone. And only in that state to be nothing can they reach the reality of La ilaha illallah. So when Sayyidina Jibra'il was going for Isra'il wal Miraj asked Prophet and told Prophet I can go no further to this boundary. So means these are immense realities, immense realities that Allah has given to the nation to reach and to be blessed by inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Shaykh Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Shaykh, when I try to stay silent and be humble, people think they can say and do anything with me. What should I do? Please guide. Yeah, if it's dunya people or if it's work people, I mean, everybody to their limit that you try to be humble and to not to use anger and bad character and at the same time you, you talk with a, an eloquent tongue that people have to learn eloquence and that's why you have a, a shaykh so that he… anyone ever feels insulted with our talks that's okay for them but there was never a name used. So the power of the talks is that it hits people in the heart and hits the people whom it's supposed to hit in the heart and never a name was used because the teachings teach us never to be direct. So it means we, we learn in our life that there's a way in which to talk the people to understand and not to be offended and this is the result of the tariqah path and taking the tariqah path and say, I don't want to talk belligerent, I want to talk like my shaykh in which he teaches in a way that people don't really know they're being taught. He directs the knowledge and the understandings in a way that not to be insulting because no name was given. So everyone has to address it to themselves and think, he's talking about me, say, yes that's correct. 
because every talk is about myself, I have to think about it as myself too from my shaykhs whom are directing me. So this is the, the path, so it's all encompassed in humility. It's not just stand there in the face of somebody yelling at you, but it's to be calm that you don't bring anger and then speak with eloquence so that you learn how to address people and how to resolve issues inshaAllah without resorting to pride and anger and, and uh, the bad characteristics inshaAllah. But there can be again 10,000 variations of that so we don't want to go into that. But this like this, then this relative did this. Everybody has a story because they're looking for an excuse that, uh, give me an excuse not to be humble. So it doesn't, doesn't have that way, everyone knows the limit in which they can tolerate and they know the tools that they need to en encompass and, and use within their lives to have good manners for Allah to be happy with them, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Wa Alaikum As Salaam Wa Rahmatullah How do we handle the inner pride that comes with being a student of tariqah? Is it good or bad thing? Forgive my adab Sayyidi. You know the inner pride is just for yourself that you're happy Allah guided you and that you, you have access to these realities and to this immense love for Prophet and uh, not, not to let the inner pride begin to govern us so that it becomes outer pride in which we feel better than other people. So there's a, a happiness and, and a shukr to Allah for guiding, that He guided us to this path, guided us to this immense reality and that it not a pride because we can defeat the pride by asking, what have you done as a result of this? So that's when the shaykh comes back and tries to bring down the pride of somebody, it's okay, alhamdulillah that you acknowledge this is immense. Now what have you done to deserve it and to keep it? You go out and propagate, you feed, you do the things that uh, show the greatness of Prophet you show your thankfulness, so this, this is a whole path. So when we have these feelings then we should have acted upon them. Not just I feel great, I know all these things that the other people don't know but now that I'm responsible I should go out and serve, I should uh, propagate the, the greatness of Prophet It's like what we said, why do we sit on a mission to make an app more powerful? Why don't we just keep the one we have? Why don't we be like other people which they don't even pay their website fees? You type this organization, this organization, they don't even have a website, it says no longer available, we'll, we buy it up and we'll take the website address and forward it to our people. And now all those websites they forward to the Muhammadan way. <laughs> why, why, why don't you just sit down and say, I don't, why do I care? Because the training was that we have to continuously push up the game right onto the last takbir that we want to be the ones whom brought the most amount of people to the presence of Sayyidina Mahdi So that's, that's the inner drive that we have to do the da'wah, we have to propagate the realities, we have to feed people, we have to give water, we have to do all the things we possibly can and, and this is a, a great task and a great responsibility. We said before those other charities that you know they, they before they give any rice and grain to people, they involve themselves with the madhab that they're following. So not everything round is, is, is so beautiful, it means not every charity is a charity. These charities their origins are very, very sort of difficult Wahhabi organizations in which they were propagating food and telling people, you know the reason why we have to give you bags of rice is your belief is wrong, don't say, Ya Allah, Ya Muhammad. Don't put this tasbih in your hand and they would go around and change the Ahl Sunnah uh, Aqeedah. But they don't say that on their flyers. So it was important for us that, no well, we're going to do a Naqshbandi charity in which we go around and we teach people, do zikrullah and uh, you want relief from difficulty, love Sayyidina Muhammad and one of our greatest events is the Mawlids that we go to the orphanages 
because you're dealing with 500 little children that should have a memory that Prophet never forgot about them. That loved them, that dressed them, gave them cake and cookies and celebrations. When you think of an orphan, how many times do you think an orphan receives a cake? In these countries they're lucky that people are giving them food. So the Maori is not something small in that country for these children. So it, it has a… I'm sure it leaves a great impression for the love of Sayyidina Muhammad within their hearts. And the good deeds that we do, that we take care of our children, you know, with everything Allah gave to us, but to take care of Allah's children are more important. And, and far greater reward and just seeing their happiness when you can give everything in the world to your kids they don't smile after a certain age at you, they expect it. You wait your kids are small, wait until they get 14, 15, they're entitled to everything you give them. Like if, if you sleep and you don't give them they'll come and take it. But these little kids when you see them getting water in a well it's like somebody brought a party into their village. How much they're <laughs> smiling for flowing water yeah, and they go to your kid and say, how come you're not smiling every time I turn the sink on? Because they don't care, they don't care and they give cake and food and all these wonderful things. So this is a, a reason to get up every morning, not just say, oh great Allah gave me so many knowledges, my goodness what I'm going to do with all these knowledges, I'm so better than everybody. No, it's, it became not something to brag about but it became an immense responsibility that these knowledges have to reach the people, have to reach the people the fastest possible way. And that's why I said we looked in the logins and people were logging in from everywhere. There are places that I know they don't like me but there's 80 logins from their location. So somebody 80 times was logging in on this particular month that we're looking at the statistics which alhamdulillah that's great, that's the whole purpose of it. It's not about liking me or not liking me but it's about the necessity of people to get the information, get the da'wah, get the resources and that's what drives somebody. So it's a matter of if you love this path then what are you doing for it? How are you trying to serve it? How are you trying to participate? Say, I can't do da'wah, you don't have to, why don't you just support us to do the da'wah? We don't need to make everybody into a shaykh, we need the shaykh to have a huge engine, right? So this like the train, not everybody's going to be the, the front of the train but everybody can be a part of the engine of the train. So that if you have a few, few good men that train can move mountains. We do what other organizations pay hundreds and thousands of dollars to do. We put on events that people you know if they go to the normal they think, oh my god that's like 50, 60,000 dollars. Now, because we have a team of very dedicated families and people and they're all over the world, they're local, they're everywhere and this is a, the power of faith. So it's not about the whole world coming to it but a few good people if they believe and they come behind you like a train, that train can go through a mountain and accomplish everything inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum dear Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam what if our colleagues at work are interested to know about this spiritual path and ask us to share about it in social gatherings, what should we do? We share about it to a very basic understanding. If they don't have a Muslim background then try to talk in relationship to how I talk. We talk with energy so that it's very common for everyone, nobody is isolated. If you're only going to talk the dogma of religion and usul and fiqr you'll lose everyone. But if you talk about energy then go back to the shaykh's teachings about energy and these are great uh, subjects for discussion. So, do you know why we wash? Say, no why do we wash? He said, for energy. Then people, you got everybody's attention, what are you talking about? So yeah all day long don't you feel like when you go to the mall you, you pick up all these horrible energies and anxieties of people and everybody will reply, yes, yes they'll give examples. So, so how do you get rid of them? And they don't know how, 
So well, that's what washing does. Water takes away all these negativities. So you go back to all the videos on energy and those are great for da'is and people whom are going to deal with people and teach people. So you don't want to give religious dogma to people whom have no understanding about religion at all but you want to give the realities of light and energy and illuminate the hearts of people towards the deen so that they come slowly towards the path that they're ready, they're doing slightly more practices, they're understanding it, they rely and they trust in it. Then they can come and do all of the other things. So everything is with patience, you know you don't, you don't build the entire city in one day, everything has to go step by step so that its foundation is solid and strong inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Wa Alaikum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah Sayyidi, I want to be from those who gave their dunya in exchange for hereafter. How to make this exchange? InshaAllah we just described the whole thing. <laughs> Don't do it in one shot because then you're going to have regret and come back and ask for everything back. So that's not going to happen. Do everything in life in moderation. So you slowly, slowly participate, slowly you give your time, slowly you give your support. And that you know you keep approaching, keep approaching, do the meditation, do the practices and that becomes the, the ayat al kareem in which Allah says, we came, we took their dunya and we gave them paradise in exchange. So it means that when you give your time to tariqah and khidmat that's your dunya, you could have made money with that time. When you come and say, okay I'm not going to buy this month this, I'm going to give and give it through the charity. I'm going to do this and this and all the things that we have put in place for people, once they participate in those, Allah's accepting the exchange. You could have bought anywhere, we've told you before you can get water very cheap, you can buy everything very cheap but when you give it towards the tariqah Allah takes that exchange now because they gave their dunya and we're giving them the barakah from something of paradise whether it's a najat, a salvation or the du'a to be accepted. So it's not the cleverness of people, oh I could get this so much cheaper somewhere else, I could do this like this, I could, I could go make my own well, do whatever you want. But when you support then Allah takes that as an exchange because they're giving their dunya and in exchange Allah is giving them paradise realities. And in the same surah Allah khudum walihum, take from them their money and pray for them. Take from them, khud, don't ask. So people don't even understand the tariqah how it operates, it operates from the orders of Qur'an in which Qur'an ordered Prophet take from them their money and pray for them. Because people are not going to part with their money easily. So when you take it from them saying that, give to the wells, give to the food, give to these difficulties, then pray for them, your prayer is a relief for them. So it means again Allah is giving the guidance that this is the ways and the realities of tariqah. So that people pay, pray and accomplish the sakina within their heart. And they feel that their dunya is going and every moment Allah is increasing their akhirah. How? Because people would say, well we all think we're doing that. No, it's every time they meditate or contemplate or make their madad they feel things happening. Someone emailed that they felt the storm coming and they felt themselves in danger. And this person does a lot of khidmat. So uh, I'm sure they understand that they're under the nazar. So as soon as they make their madad then they felt worried for the weather that was coming, said, so this is amazing. They turned around and the sunshine came out. As if it looked it was going to go from a tornado to get worse, sunshine immediately started to come out. So there's thousands of these examples. But people will say, it didn't happen for me, well you don't have the khidmat that this person has, you're not of service to the extent that this person has. So everyone should understand their own levels. So when they live a life of service means they really feel the closeness to the Divine.
And as a result Allah ask and you shall receive. Other people say, I'm asking and I'm not receiving, well then you have to go back and look at, uh, is your service correct? Is the love correct? Are you doing all that you can do to reach to that reality? And that's why we said left and right of people, each person's faith is completely different and at different stages. Some person may be seeing into the seven heavens right next to you but doesn't look any different from you. So this is uh, what Allah has given to people and to give into His creation, inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah Sayyidi, the metaverse trend is expanding faster. Is that a sign of the Dajjal speeding up the process to make most people go very down? Forgive me. <laughs> Everything's a sign. Metaverse is the least of the scariest. I wouldn't worry about, you know, uh, Facebook appearing in, a, in an anime. I would be more worried about tomorrow all the banks collapsing and absolutely no, no access to anyone's money nor food nor anything and major wars that would be occurring and that would be a, a major, major difficulties. So whether you're w running around as an avatar in, in Facebook's world is the least of our sort of worries. The, the concern that people should have is in the collapse of their monetary systems and financial systems and access to you know people's bank accounts and, and to the things that, that sustain people on a daily basis. And that we pray that Allah give everybody the hikmah in which to have set aside what they needed to set aside. You're distracting me guys, I don't know what Azan is doing with these guys, they're all looking at him. I'm looking right at you so I have to talk looking into that camera, yeah, the distraction, inshaAllah. So the difficulties that are coming are far more dangerous than the metaverse and that inshaAllah people are prepared, they have resources set aside in their home, they have food set aside and that you know at any time, that's why for so many years these teachings have come out and they use the resources and restock, use it and restock and uh, as a way they live a life in which they continuously have a supply of food and rations and, and cash and gold and things that are set aside so that if your life is not based on a, a bank being open, if tomorrow the bank closes what do you do? and that your life has food and provision set aside, those who are not near the center then you know they have to have food and provision in their homes and, and supplies. Enough so that Allah describes that the believer takes one step to Allah and Allah comes 99 steps to them. So that we take a step towards our faith and that Allah then to expand it to make it last for however long it's going to last. So we don't try to think, oh I'm going to get now for a thousand days, a thousand months, no just we try to live a life of having basic preparation for a period of time and then leave it for Allah to enhance and to bring barakah and blessings upon that sustenance and to expand it for the appropriate time necessary through these difficulties. But uh, also f others have communicated that uh, a dear brother communicated that uh, on the coronation of King Charles had a sighting or a vision of Imam Mahdi he said, Imam Mahdi became very big, huge like a mountain and they came running towards him. And so alhamdulillah this is a, a great sign because we know that the crowning of the King of England whether people like him or not is irrelevant to Allah as He doesn't care and ask the opinions of His creation but it's a isharat and a sign for many signs that were to come and that was a, a big sign for the arrival of Sayyidina Mahdi and that His appearance becoming bigger means that the zuhur and His presence into dunya will become much more significant. People have asked that, what is the correlation? It says it doesn't need to have a correlation. 
That's when people are, are very petty and they use the little brain that Allah gave to them and start instead of the vastness of the heart. And it's not an insulting comment because we said that the brain you have is not the vehicle in which to understand Allah with. If you try to use your brain on your deen you've already lost but you have to use your heart with Allah The brain is like you're thinking about why, why does that have to do with that? It has absolutely nothing to do with that but these are signs that Allah and Allah knows best that when a king is coming into that region the relationship and who that person will be at a future date Allah knows. And by the movement of that piece on the chessboard was signified something else was going to open and that's all that they were looking for was that sign. When that sign came then other people received the inspiration to validate, yes he was coming very fast, he became huge like a mountain and was coming. His zuhoor is very powerful and will come. Uh, as a najat and salvation to believers. And there are many other signs, we said before in the other videos that the, the Abrar is building a, a mukaba, and the other nations that were nice soft people they're, they're spent, it wasn't 400 million, it was 400 billion that they spent on that soccer game, right? I think 400 million was just one stadium. It's unbelievable, can you imagine how many centers and how many dawah centers and they could have converted the whole world for 400 billion dollars. But they put it for a ball, they said, these people you think are waiting for Sayyidina Mahdi? They said, no, but those were the signs that the, the speaking language, the Arabic speaking language people who should have known the most and been prepared the most, look what they're doing. The building what in the middle of the desert? One is a line in the desert, the other is a is a big golden Kaaba with ten skyscrapers in the building, just like the Lord of the Rings. Means the kings of the east are intoxicated. Dunya has gotten them so drunk, so vile in their understanding, this is their language. They should have understood that, not the ajams teach them. But they're under the spell of uh, shaitan. So these are big signs that this is this was going to happen, and that this the saat appeared, the clock appeared. And people think, oh, the clock is that metaphoric? Clock would appear? No. When you go for Hajj, a clock appeared. Who would ever go for Hajj, and there's a clock on top of the Kaaba? Well, why would anyone need a clock on top of the Kaaba? Ikhtarab al Sa'at. So Allah, Allah said, this, this nation doesn't seem to be getting things very easily. This one will make it very clear. Ikhtarab al Sa'at, wait for the time. Then I was thinking of Rajas al Sa'at, there's a clock right there. So yeah the signs are everywhere but do people have an eyes to, to see and, and ears to hear and the only hope is if they're under the, the spell of shaitan and shaitan has enticed them and lured them, no they don't see it and they're not waiting for it and they probably serve a different lord. And those whom Allah broke free of that reality they see it everywhere. They see the signs everywhere and they're I- immensely prevalent and they're frighteningly prevalent and the, and the changing of the direction of all people now, right? When they call it orientation, almost mandatory changing of the orientation of people. If they couldn't do it in one day and they couldn't do it in seven days, now they're mandata- mandating 30 days of trying to reorient people into different directions. What does that mean? Means that your orientation towards paradise has to be changed. So no the dajjal is everywhere, his system is everywhere, they're, they're in different lands making their claim now to the Kaaba and to Medina. They said, oh this is our historic religious site. And that we have a right to all these lands and to do our ziyarat and to do all of our worshipping. 
So then these are now the steps that will be taking place for people whom wish to do what they want to do because they laid the plans, they said that these are our holy lands and we want access to those holy lands but there's already somebody there saying that's their holy land. So then these are the difficulties that face the world within matter of days. You wake up and everything can be different, not a matter of, of years. In matter of days you wake up and things are different and they're happening day by day, day by day. And we pray Allah give us uh, the light in which to see within our hearts the love for Sayyidina Muhammad and by virtue of that love Allah save us. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzati amma yasifu wa salaamun al mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. In the sharif al Nabi sallallahu alaihi wa sallam wa ala mashayikhina fi tariqatun ashbandiyatun aliyya wa sa'ir sadatina siddiqeen al Fatiha. As alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Narjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. As Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh.